Hey, this is attorney Elizabeth Potts Weinstein, and today we're going to talk about how to protect your customer or client list. Your customer or client list, your prospect list, has value to you, not just based upon the fact that it's the list of your prospects, your leads, your clients, your customers, but also all the information surrounding your clients, customers, prospects, and leads. First, you're gonna have contact information. That contact information may be private information. That is your the names, numbers, emails, addresses of individual people. And it also may be proprietary for you because you put in a lot of time and energy to get that information. For example, let's say your customers or your clients are companies and you found the right person to talk to at that company to make a sale. That information is very important for you to protect because it has so much value to you based upon how much work it took to get that information. In the files you have about your prospects, leads, clients, customers, you're going to have your insights, proprietary information that you've put together based upon your research, based upon your experience with them, that's very important for the future of your business. You also have a duty to your clients and customers to keep their information secret. If it is personal information, if it is something that you have a legal duty to keep secret, like the information about individuals and names and emails, if you collected it via your website, this you know, privacy policy type implications, you're going to have ethical duties, especially in certain industries. Like as an attorney, I have a higher ethical duty to keep my client's information secret. And you also may have contractual duties to your clients. So for example, let's say you have businesses who are your customers and you know all kinds of insider information about them that could affect the value of their stock, that could be information one of their competitors would love to get. It's very important for you to keep that secret generally and especially if you have a contractual duty via an NDA or some kind of agreement with that client or customer. So who do you need to protect this data from? One side are the insiders. These are people who are employees, staff, vendors, other businesses, but or individuals who have access to that data. And you need to make sure that you protect that data even from the people who have access. The other side are the people who are outsiders. This could be former employees, former vendors, people who still have access to the data and you didn't realize they did, or people who took the data with them, perhaps even illegally. Also, you could be hacked. Okay, it could be a competitor. It could be just someone who likes to hack data. It could be that the data has a lot of value on the open market and so they've taken that data to sell it on the dark web. There are a lot of different actors who want to get at your data, both inside your organization and outside your organization, and how you're gonna protect your data is gonna depend upon what the risks are from each side. So the first thing you wanna do looking at protecting your data is just plain old keeping it secret. Keeping your data secret, keeping your data secure is about having practical things in place at your business. So fewer people have access to that data, it's need to know, and so they can't take it with them. How do you do that? Well, let me give you an example. Let's say you have your customer or client list that is on the databases of your business. Do you let your employees sync up their phones with that data? If this is their private phone and they leave, they take all those contacts with you from a practical perspective. But if you require that they only use company phones for data, then you get to keep that phone and they're not gonna take that data with them. Another way to limit access to data is to make sure that the only people who have access to data are the ones in your company who actually need the access to that data. So let me give you an example from my business. 
I have different databases that have different information about my clients. I have one database that you could think of as a marketing database. This says names, addresses, emails, the websites of the businesses that I support. Fairly high level information, most of which is public. Then I have another database that contains what I'm doing for those clients, okay? This is about the tasks, the projects, the legal work I'm doing for those clients. My marketing person has access to this database, but not access to this database. She doesn't need to know exactly what project I'm working on and the status of that project. That's not something that she needs to know to do her job. However, she does need to know what the Twitter account is for one of my clients so she can keep tabs on that to see what is important to my clients. So for every piece of data in your business, you wanna restrict access to only the people who actually need that information. The third thing that you can do is to be very picky about the businesses who are hosting your data. Most people at this point use some client kind of cloud software to host their data. It could be something like Salesforce. It could be an email marketing solution like Constant Contact. It could be having database that you upload on Dropbox. It could be having a spreadsheet that you have in Google Sheets. All those places, those companies, theoretically have access to your data in some way, unless they specifically say they don't. So that's what you have to do, is you have to find out, is stuff encrypted? Do employees of that company have access to your data? What kind of passwords are you using to access it? Do you have both just a plain old password as well as double authentication on to access that data? You wanna make sure that these outside vendors that you're using are legit and are encrypting your data and the data is protected from their employees. Sometimes I've seen, for example, email solutions for email marketing where the email marketing company actually has permission to market to your list. That's probably not something that you want and you have to watch out when you get something for free if it's actually not for free. The next thing you can look at are the contracts you have with everybody who has access to the data. So we're talking about your employees with confidentiality agreements. We're talking about outside vendors. You may have NDA, non-disclosure agreements. You might also have non-competes, covenants not to compete with employees or with other businesses who have access to data. Now you have to be careful about non-competes and non-solicitation clauses because they're not legal everywhere. And even in the places where they're legal, you can only enforce it to a certain extent. So typically, if it is legal in a state, you can only enforce it for a certain kind of industry, a certain geographical area, a certain amount of time. But it is something for you to look into if you have customer, client, prospect, lead data that you're giving to your salespeople, that you're giving to your marketing people, that you're giving to outside vendors. And is it possible for you to protect that via a contract? If you keep that information secret, protected as a trade secret, and you have all that other stuff in place to make sure that it's secret, you at least can protect them under NDAs everywhere. Whether or not you can protect them with a non-compete or not. Non-solicitation clause depends upon your location and the location of the people you want to enforce that clause against. Finally, you wanna look at what policies you have when you terminate a relationship with an employee, with a staff member, with a vendor, whoever it is, how are you gonna make sure that they don't walk out with your data? So this is practical things like having business phones for your employees instead of letting them put all their data on their personal phone. And it's also things like having an exit interview where you look at what kind of access do they have, making sure that passwords are changed, all those kinds of things that are practical aspects to put in place when you end a relationship. Again, this is attorney Elizabeth Potts Weinstein. If you have any questions about what we've talked about today, feel free to ask them in the comments below. And of course, give this video a thumbs up if you found it helpful and subscribe if you'd like any other information about legal stuff for small business owners. Thanks a lot for watching.